So we're going to start with um, John Zobitz, who is a colleague in Minnesota, and he's going to talk about the course that he has developed and is developing. So I think we can just probably leave this here. And well, thank you very much, Cindy. I'm very excited to be here. This is actually my first Sensor Summer Institute, so I'm learning a lot at the same time as well. The, the project that I'm working on is born out of a need for, on many levels. One is the institution wants to put a focus on global learning, global education. Um, also, that I have personal interest as well. I studied abroad, did some international education as an undergraduate. I saw that as very valuable and rewarding. Um, and I also want to create the same opportunities for my students. Here is just some basic statistics about who participates in the study abroad at Oxford College. We're a small liberal arts college um, in Minneapolis. What's, what's interesting is, you know, beyond looking at the participation rates of who participates, um, how often, college-wide, it's pretty uniform in terms of who gets to participate. There is um, less participation from students of color, but we are a little bit higher um, nationally. But what I found interesting was that it's not just the rich kids go on studying abroad do international education. It, it kind of in that course language. And so one of the things that I like to think about is how can I bring study abroad international education not just as a travel away experience, but in, integrate it more into the curriculum that students see every day. And one thing that I sort of believe in is that international <coughs> education study abroad should be sort of a scaffolding experience as you move into your upper division coursework in mathematics. And so how can I kind of combine international education with study abroad or with mathematics when they don't really seem to have a lot in common? Mathematics and science courses, they're very sequential. If you miss a semester, you're sort of off sequence and you need to find a way to work. And so thinking about ways to bring the two together, I said, aha, why don't I just bring it into the classroom? and look at ways where I can sort of um, intertwine the two content together. And so what I wanted to do was to design a short-term short high-impact experience that looks at uh, our local host community, where I worked with our Center for Global Education, and we found an experience in Nicaragua where students could go to, and think about their needs. What, 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 are, what does the local host community need? What can we offer as mathematicians and students? And how can we sort of create some synergy between them? And so the first phase of this experience happened in 2012, where we had a week-long intensive experience in Nicaragua tied with the Calculus II class. Um, this week-long experience happened over the course of a strict break. Because it was just trying to get it rolled off the ground, the cost of the experience, all these other barriers to access. Um, we didn't have as big of a participation of Calculus II students, but we did have a lot of interest in our upper division majors. And so we, we brought you know kind of a, a unique set of students, and they all worked, and they got along together. Um, what's interesting is that when you look at the itinerary of what we did, there was a lot of travel, a lot of sightseeing, looking at different opportunities. Um, we had, you know, couple days in the cooperative student state with local host families, only one spoke Spanish. It all worked together. So all the issues they think, whoa, this train could get derailed off the tracks pretty easily, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> um, and what the community was really interested in is how could they supplement their income to offset any losses from the coffee harvest. So looking at sustainable tourism, um, and it really developed into thinking about, about bioeconomic model that we can apply and what should they invest in. So this next phase, sort of, we had this great experience. How can I bring this, um, you know, in more into the curriculum? So this year coming up, I'm teaching a Calculus One course. We acquired funds so that the cooperative could have a remote connection with us, and so I'll be bringing them into the classroom and, you know, learning from them. And I'm going to try to integrate what the needs of the local host community wants with sort of the calculus learning, and the students will be sort of the expert consultants. Um, Hopefully we can do a return trip to the cooperative in 2016. So if I think about this cohort that are first year students in this fall, they'll be juniors and seniors, you know, moving along um, in future years, and then kind of doing that alternate remote collaboration and visit so that we have a long-term sustained partnership. So that's 
my plans and projects. So. All right. Great. Right.